Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this first session of our 2020 Techstars Startup Week Dayton. Uh, we're uh, kicking off this morning with uh, Marty Grunder, the founder of Grunder Landscaping. Uh, so Marty kicked off last year's conference with one of its most popular sessions. Uh, and this year, he's returning to kick us off with a follow-up talk. Uh, it takes a whole a whole team for any company to succeed. From hardworking field crews and salespeople to office administrators and managers, we all play an instrumental role. Marty will help you examine your strengths and weaknesses as a team player and identify changes you can make to get the most professionally and personally out of your workday. Because when you're part of a great team, you have more than just a job, you have a purpose. So uh, we aren't able to do the full uh, standing ovation to welcome our speakers that we normally do, but I'll trust you're all doing that uh, in your homes. If you want to give a quick little round of applause, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Marty. So Marty, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, thank Woo. you, Audrey. Thank you very much. Ha happy to be here with all of you. Um, these virtual presentations are, um, they're not as good as the uh, real thing being in person, but they're the next best thing. And with all the challenges, that we've all dealt with during this COVID-19 pandemic. It's really nice to be with you today and hopefully make an impact on your business and your endeavor. So today we're gonna do more than just a job, how to be a great team player. And some of you may know who I am, probably most of you don't. So let me just give you a little bit of background. Um, I started Grunder Landscaping Company 37 years ago at the age of 14 as a way to make money for college, or at least that's what we told mom and dad um, that we were doing with the business. Um, went on to the University of Dayton, graduated from there with a degree in business management. Um, and today we're one of the Midwest finest landscaping companies. Um, we specialize in residential design build and the maintenance of it. We also do a tremendous amount of commercial maintenance. We have about 50 people on our team and you can see a picture of our fleet right there. So that's a little bit about me, I've been married um, over 27 years to the lovely Lisa. She's a kindergarten teacher at Incarnation School in Centerville. And I have four uh, awesome children, thanks to my wife. Um, they range from age 26 to 19. Um, we have a couple at college that are dealing with challenges there. Boy, 2020 will certainly go down in history as one of the more challenging years that we will all have been faced with and just multiple opportunities as well. You know, so much of my success in life has come from my mindset. And when I study other people that have been successful, it's come from their mindset as well. And the mindset of being a great team player is an important part of this. Um, one thing you must understand about your business, at the end of the day, we've gotta be focused on our customer but what we have to understand is that it takes a team to please a customer. While I'm with you right here for 45 minutes or so virtually, there's 50 plus people from Grunder and five people at the Grow Group, our consultancy, that are working with customers. And the way that they treat their customers is directly reflected on the way that you treat them, treat your team. So something I like to say that I think would be a great takeaway for you this morning is that your external customer service will never exceed your internal customer service. And what we mean by that is that if you want your team to take care of your customers, you have to take care of them. Um, I remember a few years ago, I was flying back from giving a presentation outside of Washington, DC. Um, I fly a lot, so I normally have a halfway decent seat. I was on one of the little regional jets coming back from uh, Reagan National, and I got on the flight, I was tired. And I put my feet um, out, extended them from, from the front of my seat, and it went over the little um, fluorescent line where, where my feet went. And the flight attendant kicked my foot and said, that's not going to work. Move your feet. Um, now I'd been teaching all day. <laughs> I wasn't in any mood to get my feet kicked and talked to poorly by a flight attendant. Um, I used all my emotional intelligence, my ability just to remain calm. Certainly didn't want to cause an international incident on an airplane. And I sat there and I thought, and I thought, man, you know, this poor lady, I don't like the fact that she kicked my feet, but the reason she kicked my feet is probably because somebody's been kicking on her. Somebody told her she had to work overtime and didn't say thank you. Somebody maybe didn't stock her cabin properly. Maybe the pilot was terrible to her. Maybe some passengers were nasty to her. There's always a reason, folks. 
And one of the things I'm most proud of, and, and I'm not going to tell you that we always get perfect surveys at Grunder. We, we have things we have to work on too, but most of our surveys, they're outstanding. And they're particularly outstanding in the area of our team's attitude. And, and we survey that a lot and we have a dialogue going with our customers about how did our people treat you? And, and I know that, that them treating our clients well is an element of us treating them well. And there's a fine line there that that becomes very, very difficult to impress your clients. Ladies and gentlemen, your team must feel that they must work cohesively and they must feel supported. They must feel that their their word has a say in things. And there's that that gets tough because there's five of us on the leadership team at Grunder Landscaping Company that that govern and direct our success. Um, if somebody that just started with us two months ago says, I don't like your trucks and I think you should completely change all of them. Well, we're not going to completely change all of our trucks. So the fine line becomes between listening to them and, and making sure that you run the business the way it needs to be run. And, and one of the ways you do that is it's important that your people feel that they've been listened to, that they feel that they're appreciated. Um, certainly on elements of safety, um, everyone has a voice in that. Uh, we could make an immediate change based on someone's suggestion for safety. But what I'm here to tell you is the more you have dialogue with your team, the more you talk to them about where you're going, the more it personally resonates with them about how their actions directly contribute to a success, the more cohesive, <clears throat> excuse me, your team can, blame, can be. And this statement is so, so true. Um, we see it in sports all the time. I think unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at this, it's done well and done poorly in politics. Um, we see this at universities and higher education. Uh, we see this in churches. We see this in schools. We see this in businesses. You can lose with good players if your vision isn't clearly communicated, if you're selling something that a client doesn't want to buy, um, if your execution is off. You, you can have great people doing all those things, but if, but if you're not executing them all properly, you, you can't win without good players. You have to have a good team with you right there at your disposal. And there's a lot of elements that make up a great team. And that's what we want to talk about in the 40 or so minutes that we have left with you today. Uh, in my work in over 37 years as an entrepreneur and over 25 years as a professional speaker, a teacher, a coach, a consultant to literally hundreds of small businesses in all 50 states, we have found at the Grow Group that there are six traits of a team player. There's six traits of a team that exceeds client expectations. And those six are, number one, they bought, they bought into a vision and a mission. They bought into a mission and a vision. We're going to talk about that here more in a little bit. They are flexible. They're flexible people. They have enthusiasm. Their, their enthusiasm is for taking care of the client. Their enthusiasm is for horticulture. Their enthusiasm is for coffee. Their enthusiasm is for repairing guitars. Their enthusiasm is for being a part of a successful team. They're prepared. The Boy Scouts model, be prepared. Love that model. They're prepared for their day. They're, they're properly prepared by their management team to handle any situation that may be thrown to them. They're competent. They're smart. They know what they're doing. They're competent. And they're very, very aware. They have emotional intelligence. So let's talk a little bit about each one of those traits. First, they bought into the mission and the vision. Vision is your ideal state. It's where you aspire to go. It's typically an internally communicated statement. Um, you're talking to your team about where you're gonna go. Our vision at Grunder Landscaping Company is to be recognized by our peers, other experts in the industry, our customers and our team as the finest landscaping company in our marketplace. We feel like we've achieved that vision. We're working on massaging that to have something a little bit higher. Maybe we'll say in the state of Ohio, maybe we'll say in the Midwest, maybe we'll change it a little bit but you need a vision. We need something that we're shooting for. Mission is what we're going to do on a daily basis to achieve that vision. Mission, our mission at Grunder is to enhance the beauty and value of every client's property while exceeding their expectations every step of the way. We know that if we do that on a daily basis, we're going to achieve our vision. We're going to please clients. When we exceed expectations on a daily basis, success finds us. Buying into the mission and the vision of a company at the company level is very, very important. And whether you completely agree with the vision or not, you must have enough faith in your leader, in your leadership team that you support it. 
Frequently, when someone new is added to a team, it's surely understandable as they're told what the vision statement is. They're, some people call it purpose. You could call it that as well. But what are you working for? Can you buy into that? Um, what is the cause that you can get behind? Um, if you're going to work at Grunder Landscaping Company, you have to be into adding to the beauty and value of every client's property. So what that means at three o'clock on a 98 degree day when you're tired, we still expect you to drink the cold Gatorade we ran out to you, put your best foot forward and please that client. We have to deliver on what we said. That's part of our vision and our mission is to do just that. So what are you working for? At the personal level, there's a lot of personal angles that come in to working in a company. The sad but true tale, ladies and gentlemen, is that many of us will spend just as much time at work as we will with our families or our significant others or practicing a hobby that we like. I, you know, I've, I've enjoyed golf this year in COVID-19. Um, I'm working about 50 hours a week. I'm, I'm not playing golf 50 hours a week. I'm lucky to play four hours a week. So we as business owners and entrepreneurs, whether you're an entrenched entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur, Startup Dayton is all about aspiring entrepreneurs. You, you still have to understand that there, there has to be a reason for someone to want to get behind your vision. And what is your purpose? On a personal level, I love what my friend, leadership guru, Dr. John Maxwell says, ordinary people with commitment can make an extraordinary impact on their world. Let me say that again. Ordinary people with commitment can make an extraordinary impact on their world. You often see this in volunteer organizations where people get behind the cause. Um, I'm on the board of trustees at Wright State University, one of our wonderful academic institutions here. I don't get paid a dime to be on the board of trustees. I'm out there because I wanna to try to make an impact on Dayton, Ohio, and I'm enthusiastic about, our, about Wright State's mission and vision. We're trying to prepare young people for the next level, and I think Wright State does an excellent job. That's an easy thing for me to get behind. What are you getting behind in your business? If you put yourself in the shoes of the people that are working on your team that you aspire to add to your team, why would they care? What is your commitment? What is that all about? So the question becomes, how do I create a vision and mission for my business? Stephen Covey, the late great business philosopher said, to begin with the end in mind. So I would encourage you today on this Monday, September the 21st, to begin with the end of and begin with the end in mind. What are you working towards? What is your goal? If we fast forward a year from now, it's September of 2021. What would we need to do between now and then to be successful? That can be elements of your vision. You have 10 clients and you wish to have 16 clients. How are you going to get six more clients? What are you going to do? What does that vision look like? A vision and a mission are more easily bought into if they're values-based. If my vision statement was to increase Marty's EBITDA tenfold so that he can buy a 10,000 square foot mansion in Naples, Florida, would anybody on my team be at all interested in getting behind that? Um, your team is not interested in helping you with your EBITDA. Your team is not interested in helping you grow profits. But profits is an important part about a successful business. So the way that we encourage entrepreneurs to weave profitability in is how you give back in the community. I, I am so fortunate that Grunder Landscaping has been successful enough that we can give back in the community. And our team knows that for them to provide for their family, they have to help provide for their team because that's how it's gonna happen. If they enjoy the fact that we fed over 1,500 local healthcare workers a couple months ago, it was because of our profitability. Profit is not a dirty word. Profit is should be part of your everyday vocabulary. It's the ultimate scorecard for a successful business. But entrepreneurs often lose track of how we make profitability important to our team. How do we make profitability important to uh, people that come in contact with you? Um, newsflash, most businesses <laughs> are in business to make money. So why would clients care about your vision and mission? Well, less talented people can frequently outperform others before they, because they are committed. Clients should care about your vision and mission because there should be elements of that that, uh, that, make, them, uh, that make your company appealing to them. Your vision is an internally communicated statement. Typically that doesn't resonate with a client, but a mission, what they're gonna do on a daily basis, 
That is on our website. That we communicate to our clients. Our mission is to enhance the beauty and value of every client's property while exceeding their expectations every step of the way. I think there's some things in there that a prospective client or that a client could get behind. Committed people is what makes Grunder Landscaping work. There's a picture of Michael Vander Linden who's been with us 22 years. He works in our landkeeping department. He probably knows more about bugs and insects and diseases on plants than anybody else in the state of Ohio. Our clients love him. If you take time to get to know Mike, you will see he's completely committed to client satisfaction. There is no accident there. We listen to Mike. We give Mike ownership in certain areas of the company. Mike has a say on how his truck and trailer is set up. We just did our culture audit where all of our team anonymously can say what they think we're doing well and what they think we're not doing well. About 80% of our team thought we were doing a great job. 20% seems to think we have some things to work on. I used to take that stuff personally. I don't anymore. I know I'm good and I want to get better. I'm committed to the vision. I'm committed to the mission. And most importantly, myself and my team is committed to listening to our people. Are you ready to listen to your people? The second point of a team player is that they're flexible. And this is one of my favorite quotes by Michael McGriff. And honestly, I don't even know who Michael McGriff is. I, I would have to Google him. I came across this quote many years ago and I loved it. Blessed are the flexible for they shall not be bent out of shape. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not surprising you with what I'm about to say. Running a business is not easy. Some of you are probably having a very bad Monday. I'm having a pretty good Monday. Everybody showed up for work, all the trucks left the yard. Um, nothing was stolen from our yard over the weekend, not that it ever has been, but you know how Mondays can go. And a, a great trait to have if you are going to be successful is that you're flexible and that you are accommodating. You're accommodating to your team, you're accommodating to your customers. And so what I would like to ask you is a question for you to ponder. If improving the team requires that you change, are you willing to adapt? When I started my business, the technology that we used is nowhere remotely close to what we use today. Um, through using industry-specific software, we have eliminated three positions from our company that used to push papers. Processes are now done auto in an automated fashion. And I run what many would consider not a very technological business, landscaping, um, digging holes, a lot of manual labor, but there is a tremendous amount of technology. Um, I've realized that you know I'm 52 years old and a 22-year-old person working for our company has a different mindset than I do. And I've had to be flexible about how I look at things. Um, I used to not like people wearing sandals or jeans. Um, we've realized that, you know, especially during COVID-19, be comfortable. You're not gonna see a whole lot of clients today because of what's going on. We're fine being, you know, more comfortable. Marty's had to loosen up a little bit. Marty's had to relax. Uh, one of the things that I've realized in life is that change is actually a good thing. Every time we would upgrade a software system in our company, I would say to myself, why are we doing this? Why couldn't we have just left the old one? Why did we have to upgrade this? I like the old one. And then a week goes by. You're still complaining about it, but you have to admit, well, that's sort of a nice feature. Week two goes by. You find a few more features. Heck, by the end of the month, it's like, why didn't we switch to this software three months ago? This is fantastic. That's how change is. And we have to be flexible. And one of the traits that we look for in hiring people at our company is flexibility. And we ask them questions like, tell us about a time you had a challenge presented to you and how did you work with it? In working with COVID-19, how readily did you adapt to going home and working from home? Flexibility is a very, very important thing. And when we talk about change, I always like to ask, would you want a doctor operating on your heart or your knee using the techniques used 25 years ago? I would not. Um, when I was a young athlete, and fortunately I never tore my ACL, but often when you tore your ACL 40 years ago uh, or, or 35 years ago, that was career ending. That is no longer a career ending injury because of the advancements. Organ transplants, you look to medicine and how they've embraced change and where it is. You look at business and we look at big business like Amazon and how they've revolutionized the marketplace. And you may not like Amazon, 
but they're a disruptor. And the reason that they have succeeded is because of their ability to change, to change a marketplace, to get people that are creative working with them. So when we're looking at things and we're talking about being flexible, you also should be asking yourself, is there something else my time would be better spent doing? Not a day goes by, ladies and gentlemen, that I don't end up working on something that I don't really like working on, but it's what's best for the company. Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be bent out of shape. There's one of the most flexible people we have at our company, Amber Fox, our Director of Human Resources. You want to talk about a challenging position at our business, keeping us staffed and constantly recruiting and dealing with that. Um, she's a flexible person. She's a wonderful team player. The third trait that we see in great team players is that they have enthusiasm. They're, they're part of the big picture. They're not someone that points out why something can't be done. They are part of the solution. Um, those of you that are part of an entrepreneurial endeavor listening to me this morning, one of the surest ways to upset your owner is to come and talk about all the problems and all the things that are wrong, but not bring any solutions with you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna be frank with you. You're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. There are too many people in American business today that are part of the problem. They want to complain about things, but they offer up no solutions. A positive attitude goes a long way in pleasing clients. That positive attitude is rooted with you, the entrepreneur, the leader. You putting the best foot forward in a great way every day and always presenting solutions, being listening. Build on the ideas that your team brings forward. Don't shoot them down. If it's something you can't do because of budgetary constraints, recognize it, keep it in mind, look for the future for where you can maybe possibly implement it. Uh, nothing great, ladies and gentlemen, was ever done without enthusiasm. It's a choice. You can be positive and excited. I'm not talking about thinking that you can fly or that your sense of positivity is so great that you lose a sense of reality, but great team players have enthusiasm. Pete Rose amassed 4,256 hits. In my opinion, he was the greatest ball player of all time. He really messed up his personal life. It's a shame he didn't apply the same enthusiasm he had for baseball to his personal life. But this is a guy that got to where he did in, an, in a sport baseball by demonstrating enthusiasm on a daily basis for the game of baseball. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey is one of the most influential American motivators ever. You think about all the young mothers, <clears throat> all the mothers, all the people of color that she has inspired to go and chase your dreams. Um, she's turned numerous people with ideas for books into very successful people. She is constantly radiating a positive message. And when I think of Oprah Winfrey, I think of this. I think of her wonderful smile. You just look at the lady and you feel better. Oprah Winfrey is a great source of enthusiasm. And then the last one, certainly not the least, the most influential person I've ever had in my life is my late mother that, that I lost last year. That is a picture of me with mom from two years ago with one of her cherry pies. You wanna talk about a lady that was enthusiastic? Mary Ellen Graham was enthusiastic. And while I miss her, her spirit of enthusiasm, her never telling me my crazy business idea for a landscaping company wouldn't work, her always having a positive outlook. Even when she was sick with cancer, she continued to fight that valiantly with a positive frame of mind. That's something that you should be thinking about as well. Being more than enthusiastic, one of the ways you can do that is surround yourself with enthusiastic, positive people. The internet has provided a great place for that and also a great place for you to get in the ditch and find a whole lot of negativity. Get around other positive people. Dr. Maxwell has three awesome suggestions for improving your enthusiasm. Create a sense of urgency. Make things happen. Be willing to do more. People that do more are, is someone that others want to be around. And strive on a daily basis for excellence. The fourth trait of being a great team player is preparedness. The Boy Scouts motto is very simple. It's called, it's be, be prepared. How prepared are you? Are you ready for whatever day may hold you? Uh, my wife is one of the most prepared mothers you'd ever meet in your life. Anytime you went on vacation, <clears throat> if you needed a Band-Aid, a mint, a pair of scissors, 
a map, uh, extra set of clothes. I mean, my wife was prepared for everything. When we would do our annual camping trip or a canoe trip, my wife had everything. If you look at a Grunder landscaping truck the next time, you will see boxes all over it. They are prepared. I am prepared. I'm prepared for today. Hopefully you can tell I practiced. Hopefully you can tell I've had some help. Audrey helped me. We all rely on each other for getting ahead by being prepared. Do you think ahead? Do you anticipate the questions, the concerns, the needs of your clients? Clients love to work with companies that think ahead. They love to work with companies that anticipate. When you go to a restaurant, the best restaurants, whether it's a five-star restaurant or it's Chipotle or Chick-fil-A, I think Chick-fil-A is one of the most, most wonderful examples of business that you could have in terms of how they execute, how prepared they are, how polite they are. Um, you know, you don't have to wait in the line at, at Chick-fil-A. I don't ever get out of that line, even if it wraps around the building three times, because they bring more people out to take the orders and make it work. The consequences of not being prepared are you disappoint clients, you miss opportunities because you don't have a form on your website to handle things. You lose time, you frustrate managers because they don't have the tools or the systems or the procedures to do things. Uh, fail to plan, ladies and gentlemen, plan to fail. When you are prepared with policies, procedures, systems, you win. And let me share this with you. Ordinary people can do extraordinary things with systems. And that's why it's so important to be prepared. Number five, competency. Do only what you are capable of. I think there is a tendency for entrepreneurs to try to do more than what they can do. In fact, one of the things we find with working with small service businesses is, is that what gets them to a million dollars a year in revenue is saying yes. And it gets them to a million dollars a year. The owner is able to manage that accordingly. The span of control, they know all the team's names, they can handle the accounting, they can handle the billing, they can handle operations, they can handle HR. But generally speaking, this is a, just a general line, when you get above a million dollars in revenue in a small service business like mine, the owner can no longer do everything and you lose things. And you have to be willing to say no. One of the hardest things for an entrepreneur is to say no because we don't win by saying no. Would you like to, could you landscape my yard? No, I can't do it, my schedule's booked up. But you go and you say yes, you can't deliver on the timeline, you disappoint a client, they fire you, they tell all their friends and bad things happen. I'm sure a lot of restaurants are really struggling with this right now, operating at half capacity. I'm sure they'd like to say yes and have somebody wait three hours to where they could let them in. But in the long run, again, this gets back to what we talked about. When your vision for success and happiness of the client is clear and concise, you can see why you need to do things. Great businesses pay attention to details. They pay attention to service. And when we're talking service, we're talking about all sorts of things. Is your website mobile enabled? If I pull up your website on my iPhone, does it screenshot? Does it fit to the screen there? Um, how is your how are your phones answered? I called a bank the other day and I got on their voicemail. It said to check a menu to talk to a banking officer. I couldn't talk to anybody. I pushed zero, it put me back to that. It was in a loop. Now, maybe it got broken, but great businesses pay attention to details like that. Cleanliness, how clean is your office? How clean are your vehicles that are out on the road? How clean do you leave a job site when you work? If you're a consultant and you come into work at someone's office, do you leave things better than you found them? How is the order of your business? Does it look like you know what you're doing? What are the skill sets that people have in your company? Can you do what you said you would do? Are you a skilled uh, team member? Listen to other people's critiques, folks. Um, I told you that we just did our culture survey and 20% of the surveys I would deem has not good. Um, but you know what? If you just wanna get glad handed all the time, if you just wanna be told how great you are, you're not gonna get better. I hope this doesn't come across as arrogant, but. I know that I run two very good businesses. I know we're good at what we do. So I am not going to get better by somebody telling me how great I am. I'm going to get better by somebody giving me authentic, heartfelt feedback. People have different perspectives. They see things differently. I think that's one of the things that's wrong in our country right now. We have no empathy. There's too much yelling. People don't want to try to help one another. There's not enough love. I use feedback as an opportunity to get better. And once your team knows that you're open to criticism, that you're open to constructive criticism, 
that you want to get better, that their voice matters. Man, you can make tremendous changes in your company. I've come a long way from that day in 1986 with my Red Ford Ranger with my brother Rich, weighing in at about 150 pounds. I weigh a lot more than that now. Um, we all learn from our prior experiences. And when others know that you want to learn, great things can happen. Awareness, the last trait that I want to share with you here today, and we're going to open it up for some questions if you want to ask any questions. Um, awareness, are they aware of the world around you? Do you realize this isn't about you? Are you aware of how your actions affect others? It's called emotional intelligence. When I was a student at the University of Dayton back in the late 80s and early 90s, emotional intelligence was not something they talked about in business. You heard the word empathy once in a while. You heard about being considerate. But emotional intelligence is something that great entrepreneurs possess this. And the good news about emotional intelligence is that it actually can be learned and it can be improved. Your intelligence quotient is your ability to learn something. Um, it's never going to be improved. Um, mine is not dreadfully low, but mine's not dreadfully high either. I do a pretty good job at learning things. That's never going to change. Emotional intelligence, your, your EQ quotient, researchers, psychologists have determined that you actually can improve that. So there's a great bunch of research that's out. I would encourage you to Google emotional intelligence. Daniel Goldman has some great work on it and some other business um, psychologists. But emotional intelligence, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to separate yourself from winning and losing in business. Business owners and members of a team that have high emotional intelligence, they realize it's not about them. These are the people that bring a Snickers bar in for their fellow team member. These are the people that clean the bathroom after they're, they're in it during COVID-19. These are the people that leave their workplace a little bit better. These are the people that ask the client if you'd like for them to wash off the back patio because you saw it could use washed off too. It's about putting others' needs before the needs of your own. They ask for permission, they're polite, they're considerate, and they follow protocol. They're a rule maker, not a rule breaker. Great team players are always considerate. Emotional intelligence is one of the greatest ways you can improve your business, and I would encourage you to do some studying on that. Uh, Audrey, I'm going to open it up to some questions. Let's see if I can get the chat box open. Were there any questions? You might have to help me here. No problem. Uh, for attendees, uh, if you open the session Q&A, uh, then we'll start collecting those as you type them in for us. And if we don't, if we don't have any, that's okay, Audrey. So. I'm not seeing any yet. No problem. I know how these things go virtually. I have a close I want to share with you, so. Well, let's just do this. Everyone can reach out to me on social media. I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, Instagram. If there's a way that I can help you with your business idea or your business endeavor, just reach out to me there. Um, I answer all questions that way. We're happy to help you. <clears throat> Let me just close with this. Hey, Marty, we did just get one in. Okay, go ahead, Audrey. Um, when the COVID pandemic unfolded, what was your first response? <laughs> wow. Um, March the 24th, 2020 was probably the lowest point in Grunder landscaping history. And I think there's a lesson to be learned here, Audrey. Um, it was 67 degrees. The sun was shining um, and Governor DeWine mandated a shutdown of all businesses, which I understand. Um, we don't know what we were dealing with here. And I think in many aspects, we still don't know what we were dealing with. Um, but being closed as a landscaper uh, on a March nice day would be the equivalent to a retailer being closed three days before Christmas. Um, and I remember going into the office, there was nobody at the office, all the trucks were sitting, a um, couple million dollars worth of equipment sitting, and I'm wondering what 
what is going on? What am I going to do? Um, and I probably for about a day felt sorry for myself. Um, and then you start watching what other people are dealing with and you get to work. So like anything else um, in life, I, I think it's your perspective. And what I always try to do when I get myself in a bad spot is get around other positive pe people. And I also try to reflect on what I'm grateful for. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a kid anymore. And I've lost some people very close to me um, that have lost their lives. Um, I, I've had some great days in business and I've had some bad days. And I think when you embrace change, when you really have hope, and why hope is not a strategy, it is what keeps us going. So I was hopeful things would turn around. It's crazy. We are having a fantastic year right now. Um, many people are wanting to do landscaping. They're wanting outdoor rooms. They're wanting fire pits. They're at home. They're wanting their properties to look good. So because of a great team that we have at Grunder that's committed, and, and I think that's a direct reflection of, of how we work together with them, um, we've gotten on the other side of this pretty well. So my first reflection was, wow. Um, and uh, we've dealt with it well. There's still an awful lot of heartache, folks. Um, I have friends that own businesses. I have clients that own businesses that are struggling uh, greatly. Um, you know, if if there's a way you can help by getting some takeout, if, if there's a company that provides a service that's, you know, that you can use at your house or your business and they're slow, man, send them some business. Um, that, that was my initial response and that's how we've dealt with it. Been pretty fortunate for my team at Grunder in this year, for sure. Couple of other questions. Um, what advice would you give to young founders as they work to be taken seriously as they build their teams? Uh, we have a few young clients and I'm curious your view. Is yeah, what the so, asker typed. yeah, Audrey, that's an awesome question. Uh, so I'm old. But I can remember when I was a teenager running my business and I remember when I graduated from UD and, and really started to expand my business. Um, I, what I'm going to say is very trite, but you're as young as you act. Um, there are so many examples, way more in 2020 than in 1986, of young entrepreneurs doing crazy things with their business. I think you're only as young as you act. Um, if you act immature and don't get back to clients, um, you deserve what you're going to get. If you uh, conduct yourself in an inappropriate fashion on social media in a personal way and somebody reads that and doesn't want to do business with you, you got what you did there. So um, I, I think it's it, you're only as young as you act. Uh, for, for me and our team at Grunder, we don't care how old you are. Um, we care if you're any good at what you're doing. And we're more than willing to give a young entrepreneur a chance if there's a service they offer that we can use. In the area of technology, the young man that, that does our IT work at our office, he can't be but 21 or 22 years old. And this young man is fabulous. Um, he's very personable, he carries himself well, but at the end of the day, you know, we talked about in the six traits of a great team player, he's competent, he knows what he's doing. Um, and I talk to him two or three times a week when grandpa here messes something up, so uh, I think you're as young as you act. Are there any good tools or tests to detect a good team player during an interview? There, there are certain things that you can ask. Um, you know, I, I would recommend that you Google some of those questions. There's Strengths Finder, which is work by the Gallup organization that some companies use. There's personality tests that you can use. But I don't think anything replaces a good heartfelt conversation with the candidate. Um, I'm very fond of people that played sports. Um, and, and I, you know, I don't even care if you were good at the sport or not. We're, we're, you know, sometimes the greatest team players were the ones that sat on the bench and rooted for everyone else. But I think sports teaches, teaches us lesson, lessons. Um, ask them about uh, examples of, of when they worked as a team player that they're proud of. Um, you know, ask what they do for fun. You know, if they tell you things like, well, I like to play volleyball, um, I'm involved at my church and I work in the youth group, uh, whatever it is, look for, look for prior experience. It doesn't have to be work where they demonstrated some teamwork. 
Dr. John Maxwell says that if somebody attained a leadership position in a volunteer organization, that's some of the greatest examples of leadership and teamwork you could ever find. When, when, a, when you can get a volunteer to do what you want need them to do, and th there's nothing holding them there. You don't, you don't employ them, you're not paying them. So there's a lot of great leaders that can be found that, that spend their time in volunteer organizations. Um, so hopefully that helps a little bit. That's some of the things we look for. I'm not seeing uh, any more questions. So thank you, Yvette and Aaron, uh, for your questions. Um, then we do have a comment from uh, from Kate. Thank you, Marty. Appreciate your sharing your wisdom and experience. And so I will uh, I'll second that, and then I'll I'll let you uh, let you wrap it up. Well, Audrey, I, I admire what you folks have done with Startup Dayton. Um, you know, I'm sorry we can't be in person. Maybe I'll be fortunate to come back in some capacity next year and, and maybe we'll be someplace in downtown Dayton. Um, I want to give you a message of hope. I, I know that this COVID-19 has presented extraordinarily cha extraordinary challenges on everyone. Um, in, in some sense, maybe there's good that can come from that in that everybody has dealt with this. And I want you to think about some entrepreneurs and some real pioneers from Dayton. Um, look up Josephine Schwartz. Look up Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Look up Wilbur and Orville Wright. Look up John Henry Patterson. Look up my personal favorite, Charles Kettering, and see what those people went through. In fact, there's a wonderful book that's all about the Wright brothers that talks about how all the challenges those two men um, battled uh, to, to invent flight. There were people that wanted those two men committed to a mental asylum because they watched birds fly and they wondered why we couldn't do the same with some type of, of mechanical uh, device. And they did that. M my home office here is, I have Wright Brother pictures all over the place. Um, there is an opportunity for you to do the same thing. We had an entrepreneur many years ago that's still a, a prevalent part of our business community here, Clay Matil that took a company called the Imes Corporation from half a million dollars in sales to a billion dollars a year in sales, um, selling pet food. Where is that next person? It could be you. And if you create a team that others want to work with, that's how you grow a business. You don't grow a business by doing everything yourself. You grow a business by being an entrepreneur that others want to work on. Use the six traits that we shared with you today and if in any way, shape, or form I can help you, let me know. I'm rooting for all of you. Dayton, Ohio is a great place to live and work. Audrey, thanks for having me today, and I'll talk to all of you soon. Thank you so much, Marty. Thank you, Audrey.